In this video, we want to look at the common ion effect. And this is a situation we encounter in aqueous solutions where we have two or more compounds that share a common ion. Before we go into a common ion effect, let's first look at just a solubility problem so we can see what's different when we move to something with a common ion. So let's imagine I had pure water into which I was going to put an insoluble compound, in this case lead iodide. So I'm going to take an insoluble salt, lead 2 iodide, and I'm going to put it into the water. And the lead 2 iodide is going to dissolve and it's going to make some aqueous lead ions. And for every aqueous lead ion it makes, I'm going to get two aqueous iodide ions. Lead 2 iodide is an insoluble yellow salt, and so I'll imagine what's going to happen is I'm going to have some solid lead 2 iodide here, and I'm going to stick it into the solution. And I'm going to imagine what happens, and mostly what will happen is that I'm going to get a chunk of some solid yellow thing on the bottom of the container. Now a very tiny amount of that solid will dissolve and I'll end up with a few lead ions floating around in solution. And for every lead ion that I get, I'll end up with a couple of iodide ions floating around in solution. If I want to look at the concentration of lead in this solution and the concentration of iodide in this solution, I have to know Ksp for lead iodide. And I can go and look up that value and I discover Ksp for this compound is equal to 1.4 times 10 to the minus 8. So I can relate that to the concentrations because I know this is the concentrations at equilibrium in a, sa in a saturated solution is equal to the product of the ions. So the lead ion times the iodide ion concentration times the iodide ion concentration. So this is the iodide ion concentration squared. Now this is always true, that is, at equilibrium I discover the product of the lead ion and the iodide ion square equals some constant. And so the question becomes, what are those concentrations? In this particular case, I know that there's a relationship between the concentrations. That is, I know that I get two moles of iodide for every one mole of lead. And so if I was to write that out, I could say that I know the iodide concentration is equal to two times the lead ion concentration. And now if I just imagine that the lead ion concentration is some number, say x, then I can set up an algebraic expression for Ksp. Ksp is equal to the lead ion concentration, which I'll call x, times the iodide concentration squared. The iodide concentration is 2 times the lead concentration, so that's going to be 2x squared. When I put that all together, this comes out to be 4x cubed, and it allows me to solve for x. And if I do that, I get x is the cube root of Ksp over 4, which in this case, when I work out the math, comes out to be 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And I know my concentrations are molar. So what is that concentration? Well, I can write that amount x back to the concentration because x is what I defined as being equal to the lead ion concentration. So the lead ion concentration just has to be equal to 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And I know the iodide concentration in this situation is twice that, because for every lead ion, I had two iodide ions that dissolve. So it's 3 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. So what I want to look at, which is different, is what would happen if I put this compound, lead iodide, not into pure water, but actually into a solution that already had iodide. So first, let's think about an iodide solution. The solution I want to think about is 0.5 molar potassium iodide. And so in this case, I can depict the potassium ions as, say, little blue dots. So there are a lot of them in this solution because it's quite high concentration. And then I also have some iodide. 
and I'll draw the iodized little red dots, and there's a lot of iodide, because in fact there's an iodide ion for every potassium ion as well. We have a lot of potassium iodide dissolved in this solution, so lots of ions floating around. If I wanted to think about the concentrations of these, I know the concentration of potassium is going to be 0 0.5 molar, because for every mole of potassium iodide I put in solution, I get one mole of iodide. And the iodide concentration is also going to be 0 0.5 molar. So now let's say instead of dumping in an insoluble compound from the chemistry lab into the solution, I decide to just toss my car keys in. So what do I end up with now? Now I end up with a big mess. I've got my car keys dumped into the solution, but since my car keys are insoluble, um, nothing really changes. That is, when I look at the iodide concentration, the iodide concentration is still 0.5 molar, and the potassium concentration still is about 0.5 molar. And so when I put in my keys, we essentially have no change. Now let's imagine instead of chucking my keys in, I decide to put in some of that yellow solid that I had before, a little bit of the lead iodide. And so now there's a little hunk of lead iodide that's down at the bottom. Well, lead iodide is fairly insoluble, and as a result, I know that essentially there will be no change. And so what that means is that now when I'm done, the iodide concentration will still be the same. So the iodide concentration is 0 0.5 molar. I can ask a new question, which is, what is the lead concentration in this new solution when I put it in with the common ion, I minus? This is just a problem I can solve straightforward from the KSP. KSP for lead iodide is the same. It's the lead concentration times the iodide concentration squared. But now something's different. I know this, and I know this. And so there's only one thing left to solve for. So when I put these all back in, I get this is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 8. The lead concentration is still unknown, but now this is 0.5 squared. Then if I solve, I can get the lead ion concentration is simply equal to 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8. So how much of the lead iodide dissolved in the solution that contained a common ion? Almost none. The molar solubility used to be something like 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3, but now it's 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8. And that's because I put it into a solution that had a common ion. I can think about this differently looking at it from a KSP perspective. So what I know is that at equilibrium, when as much is dissolved as possible, so I have solid lead iodide, and I have lead ions in solution, and iodide ions in solution, that the product of the lead concentration and the iodide concentration is equal to a constant. So imagine, instead of me putting the lead iodide into a common ion solution, I added the common ion to a saturated solution of lead iodide. That is, I'm going to manipulate the concentrations. So let's say I added potassium iodide to the solution. Well, what will happen? The potassium iodide is very soluble, and so the iodide concentration will go up. So I'm going to increase the iodide ion concentration. Now, as the iodide ion concentration goes up, the product of this concentration with the lead has to be a constant. And the only way I can make the iodide concentration go up and maintain the product as a constant is if the lead concentration then goes down. So as one of them is going up, the other one has to go down. So if I have a saturated solution and I add iodide, what will happen is it will precipitate with some of the lead and the lead concentration will go down. If I have a saturated solution and I add lead, by say adding lead nitrate, it will precipitate with some of the iodide and the iodide concentration will go down. 
So I can manipulate these concentrations independently by mixing solutions with common ions and change the solubility and form precipitates.